Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, today's work session. Today is May Monday, May the 24th, 2021. The time is now 5 p.m. The work session of the City Council of the City of Trinidad will now come to order. And we also have it through Zoom for those that uh, are listening in today. We have uh, some items to discuss tonight. One is uh, I at Trinidad Community Foundation Grand Review. Item two is discussion regarding possible property purchase. Item three is a memorandum of understanding between Los Angeles County, City of Trinidad, Nature Conservancy, Trust for Public Lands for the Fisher Creek Recreation Plan and Impact Study. Item four is discussion regarding new public health orders. And item five, the direction regarding retreat and there's a couple of other items I think you wanted to discuss that came up with 238. Correct. So we're two with uh, 238. Correct. So let's go ahead and get started with the Trinidad Community Foundation grant review. Uh, Colonel Simpleman, are you listening in with us tonight? Yes, I am, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And uh, Lisa Camarillo, our president. Hi, Frank. Okay. I want to go to you. We should be here shortly. Uh, 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 
Uh, I'll use Cascade Cradle as, as an example. If something came up and you wanted a quick response to get somebody a few thousand dollars in it, just a resolution and we'll have an authorization, authorized agent say, oh, I'm ready to fucking, you know, send us an email that says, give this organization a few thousand dollars for this purpose, and then we would handle it the same way as the grant. They have to verify how they spend money on that. But that's your money, it's not ours, we can't touch it. So we could sit there forever, frankly. But think about that. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Downs, I, I, I assume that perfectly is legal as far as uh, the city is concerned. And certainly, uh, I, I don't see any reason why that could not be done. Now, having said all of that, are there any questions? Let's get some questions from council. Uh, Mr. Williamson, do you have any questions? Um, <clears throat> for the the um, agencies that are recommended to do not fund, what what um, consideration was used to make that uh, decision? Uh, good question. I mean, you know, we have the criteria of the uh, you know the grants have to tell how they're going to use the money specifically. You know, uh, so we don't we don't uh, let's, it, it, if you like, let's go down like the uh, ABC uh, Disability Group. You know, again, a great cause and all that, but they just couldn't tell us how they were going to use the money. Okay, it was kind of something um, we didn't put anything like that. It's just that, you know, we, we didn't have specifics on how they were going to use it. The ROK, it came down to that that was uh, for uh, operational. And, and we just don't do that, uh, man. You got, it, it's just too hard to track. That's where we have, that's where we can experience some difficulties. Uh, so we we tend to not do operational uh, uh, costs. Now you, you know they have the option of using some of that money for operations, and uh, it, you know uh, program money. Say maybe they can use for operations and other. Uh, Okay, I, I I appreciate that. Thank you. I just want okay. to know one thing. You know, not only being on city council, but my previous years being involved in the community. One thing that's pretty that's pretty obvious with a lot of philanthropic groups is not to fund for operation. That's sure, a, that's, okay. a big, that's a big thing. That I think I I think um, that's a, a good answer, and just <clears throat> as I feel comfortable as long as we have um, something that's sure uniformly applied that uh, is well within our purview, so it makes good sense. Mr. Bill. Thank you. So, Mr. Simpleman, looking at, you know, this first go-around of funds and your vetting process and your recommendations, I think just goes to further prove the wise decision we made to handling this off to you and allowing you all to relieve us of this uh, and staff of this continuous uh, request for funding. I appreciate what you're doing very much and, and I like what I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I will tell you, we did learn some lessons. I can't anything else to go back and look at the processes. And I think the next go around, we'll, we decided that we can cut the time by uh, having people come in and, you know, we can interview them. And, because it's not a contest. It's not, you know, we want everybody to succeed, right? So we, we'll make sure, like some of these people that didn't get at this time, we'll make sure that we educate them so that they'll, they'll make better requests next time. So and I appreciate your comments. You bet. And, and all the groups are fine. And then we've had the records where they, I mean, a record of them uh, supplying the letter. Yeah, you know, we've got a couple that it's too tough to get the information out of, but we've got, we've got it. <laughs> That's where the work goes. Mr. DeBone. Hi, Colonel. <coughs> Uh, how much money is allocated uh, to the Trinidad Triggers this year? Uh, that I, I, I really don't know. Uh, oh, you mean from uh, TCF? Yes. Oh, okay. We're, we're going to give them a couple thousand. What they give uh, uh, the grant request. They, 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 and, uh, it's the same thing. Isn't it? Look, really what it is, if, if you want to look at it, we took some feed money for the feed. Uh, so we're just taking some of that and supporting them. A community uh, asset. So it's but then we're, we we uh, our resolution says we'll we'll sponsor up you know that two thousand dollars at that level. Okay. Okay. Now, now the total I have no idea. I have no 
about that. Mr. Shu. You know, I don't have any questions other than I think you guys are doing a good job. I agree with Rusty and uh, go with that. So I'll go three. I agree with the comments already. Nope. I have a couple questions. When sure. is the next round that you'll be considering? Uh, I, oh, when will it be considered? Uh, as soon as possible. I, I would like to see it kick off at least, you know, the advertising that uh, started by the middle of the late June. I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, we're pressing some of these people working pretty hard, but uh, I, I think one July, or I mean, you know, early July is the latest. And we'll give people again a couple weeks to write in that. So I, people need the money. I want to get it up there like you do as soon as possible. Okay, so not just quarterly. You're going to do it more often. Oh, no, than no, 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 no. Okay. You know, as soon as we can look at our schedule and get it done, you know, we'll, we'll do it as soon as possible. Okay, and then I just was curious what in the uh, Hispanic Chamber, Chamber of Commerce uh, Cinco de Mayo event. What does overcome by the calendar mean? Oh, just Cinco de Mayo is on 5th of May. Okay. Now, well, are they going to come in and ask for next year. Okay, so they're not going to consider an alternative yeah. date or something. No, no, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And Colonel, thank you for, uh, you know, like I said, like Rusty said, taking the work off, the workload off of the city council. That was proposed, that was proposed a few years ago, and, and it's worked out well and continues to work. So uh, thank you and uh, the people from the TCF that worked on this to uh, distribute the money into the community as you see uh, fit. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot one thing, you know, I'm a bad but I uh, forget uh, when we distribute the check, which again we want to do as soon as possible, uh, you know, it's the city's money. We should have city representation and uh, anybody you would like. Uh, we, we can talk with you as to where uh, and when we'll distribute that funds, but uh, if we did it at our offices or in Silver Long if we did it here, you know, we could have some refreshments and cookies and, you know, like punch and stuff like that. Uh, and if uh, people come in, and if, if your money in the city should be up, we make sure that everybody knows it's your money, but when we start taking pictures and the press start writing about it, you know, the, kid, the city should get the credit, not us. Well, just, just let us know what date uh, the distribution of those checks okay. would be. And you mentioned uh, earlier about a possible donor advised fund, and I'm not sure. Council wants to discuss that now, or um, Mr. Williamson, do you have any questions on it? I, I do not. No. Rusty. Um, I don't know. I think maybe we should have a discussion about that and see how that works because I think the city, I know that Mike has plenty of work to do, but at his discretion, if something was to pop up, he has the ability to authorize a certain amount of expenditures, but I think some discussion about, amongst council, council about, about that would be good. I, I really don't have a question, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah, I just have to talk with more comments. Are you, are you saying, it's Colonel Sutton, still there? Colonel. Okay. Are you saying that you want the city to give TCF some direction about how to spend money or to hold back some money that city council would just award based on some urgent situation right. or something? Yeah, it's more the latter. I mean, you can give us direction anytime you do it, you know, how you want to spend. But uh, just give you flexibility, you know, if you want it. On the other hand, I was talking to uh, Mike Valentine, you know, when you, uh, I don't know if you're going to vote to approve or accept, but I would approve, I would vote, I would suggest that you vote to accept our recommendation. Uh, and if anybody comes up and starts pounding on your dad, you can't have to us, you know, that's what, that's our job. <laughs> but make sure you have, uh, you know, take the, the pressure off of you guys and you can talk about those jerks over there. So. <laughs> Mr. Valentine, do you have any question on the donor advisement? No, um, I think it's a it's a great idea. Um, we get requests all the time, but then again, 
we want it to be projects and not you know mm -hmm. operational so um i think it's a great idea and if somebody contacts the city i would definitely run by everyone before i said yeah go and 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 then we could direct uh the foundation to kind of administer that do you think I, cheryl would have any questions on that um she might i've got to talk to her about it okay um, why don't you just go say with her and see what if she has any questions or any concerns right okay <clears throat> all right Colonel Superman thank you for the information and uh, good job thank you very much thank you so so this council feel like they need to have this on a regular agenda to vote on it or are you just saying that it's not a I don't really think that we need to vote on it. Something, but I don't know if it's necessary to vote on it. Uh, Ms. Garrett, I don't believe that it's necessary because we've allocated that money to for them to, uh, to disperse the money as they as they see fit, and he's okay. uh, Colonel has just given us a, a report of how they're going to distribute that money. So I don't really believe that we need to put it as an agenda item moving forward. Okay. I agree. I think. Well, uh, we can go ahead. Yeah, so as the colonel uh, mentioned, I think the consensus is city it, the council accepts right. their recommendations. Right. Yes. So uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Okay, okay item two, uh, discussion regarding possible property purchase. Mr. Valentine, what do you got? So um, there's a couple maps, and I hopefully... Uh, Mr. Perot from the gas utility uh, director is on the call, but just to set it up briefly. Yeah, I'm here, Mike. Good. Um, jump in here in a minute, Steve. Um, Steve was approached by uh, the owner of the property that's adjacent to uh, the gas shop, and uh, it's been for sale for a while. And um, there's there is an opportunity part of. The, Part of the issue is if you look at the, the map, gosh, I wish we could have it on screen, but if you look at the map, there's this yellow portion in your packet that kind of abuts um, our gas shop, which if somebody were to uh, fence it off and close it off, it would render that side of the gas shop not usable. Um, the uh, Current owner has worked with the city, but it's been for sale, and, and we've had some inquiries. Um, we're we are considering it, and for several reasons, for that sliver, for the building that is there. There's one building that's usable for storage, and then um, for either a city impound yard, for housing, for parking for across the street where the uh, space to create is. Um, thank you for whoever put that on screen, Audra. Um, or, um, you know, we're, we're doing this river visioning and we could split that up and possibly have kind of a, a trailhead there or something, so. And that's the part in red, correct? Um, that's the red portion? Correct, okay. on that map. Um, the overall area is the green and the yellow. And I'll turn it over to Steve if you have anything to add, Steve. Um, yeah, it was just like that. We purchased that. Uh, no. The section no, in no, yellow, the yellow, the north side of our garage and gas shop, is what we're really needing to get. Um, I've asked Mr. Parsons if he would be willing to split that property and we could just purchase that section. Uh, he said he wouldn't at this time. He wants to sell the whole thing. Uh, he informed me that he's had a few curious inquiries about it. Um, one was about the contingency of somebody's property selling, which didn't sell. So that one fell through, but the guy is still interested. And um, he had another one that was getting close to making a contract on it. So I was just wanting to move forward with this and see. Um, before somebody does buy it, fences off that section, or they have the city over a barrel and, and want us to pay them a ransom for that uh, section. <laughs> if we do lose that section of uh, property right there, 
we have trailers and trucks and pipes stored on that area, we'd no longer be able to do that. So um, we lose a lot of our yard space that we're using right now. So Mr. Valentine, the the funding would come from where to, because it's shorter than 12,000? 12,000. We have a, a line item for property acquisition, but uh, initially the gas uh, department would purchase it. Um, something we failed to mention is if we, if council is amenable, we will make an offer contingent on a phase one environmental uh, okay. on, on the area because everybody knows that that was star texaco yeah. bulk plant so um, we're told and they have paperwork of the tanks being removed but we we want to ensure that we're not buying uh, you know problems if so. that were to happen is there a possibility of course to in the future to go after like a brownsfield rent well we've rent? already talked to georgie since we we received the the grant for extension of the brownfield, we could, this would fit in there. Okay. Mike, uh, when we were on council, we had talked about that before. And I think the, the city manager had some information on that. There was some problems there with the gas and oil and stuff that they were gonna have to clean it up, decontaminate. I don't know if you still have that information. Or well, something. yeah, the current owner has uh, information that the tanks were removed in. Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, 1998, the tanks were removed. 99. 99. Oh, the tanks were removed. Yeah, they were closed so. off in January of 2000. So it might be that there, that's what was. There were three underground storage tanks that were removed. Yeah, there was. And then they were backfilled. Um, the report is kind of vague. It doesn't go into a lot of detail. Uh, it says that the tanks showed no leakage. Uh, they were methodically protected and there was some uh, some corrosion on the tanks but nothing serious and that that's about all that the report shows do we have, to too much detail about soil do we have propane tanks stored here for a while on and the they farm? were far farther uh to the west yeah yeah and those, <laughs> those have been removed those were in actually uh cedar street right of way and that was, and that's still our right of way, oh, okay. where the walking trail goes by that uh, CN, uh, propane tank. The tanks are gone, but the the building is still there. Yeah. Mr. Altine, being that the owners, you know, I'm not sure if he's willing to give us a clean bill of health on that property or not. Uh, um, I think pending. Uh, I think yeah, we, we yeah, need to rely yeah, on uh, yeah. the phase one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some questions, Mr. Uh, Williamson. I, I have no questions past what we've been discussing. I mean, I think that phase one would be super critical. And Mike, I know um, the uh, frequency of soil collections dependent on um, what the expected or um, historical use has been, but we might go above and beyond just to ensure that I mean, an adequate soil sample is taken because I'd be, I mean, I've, I've seen uh, phase one that have been, you know, improperly applied and then, uh, you know, you find out the real problems after. after. So I think we, we should, we should feel, well, when I say we, you should feel comfortable right. with the selection of the phase one, um, you know, pothole. Yeah, so it's Mr. Goodall. So, so with current market values, 1.63 acres, $212,000, does it seem to fall within? It, it does, $3 an acre. Okay. Uh -huh. $3, yeah. Square foot? Uh, square I mean, foot. Uh, yeah. I'll buy that tomorrow. I'll buy that tomorrow. Are there any water drainage issues that the city should be aware of? Um, Steve, did you hear the question? Are there any water drainage issues that the city should be aware of? No, the, all the years that we've been there, I've been there down at that gas shop 
for about 20 years there, and uh, in that property, we've never seen any water issues. Uh, we've been there through some heavy snowstorms and heavy rainstorms, and um, no issues with water drainage there. That's because the of. excellent erection of that building. The guy who put that up knew what he was doing. Put it up on stool. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> put it up on stool. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I was <laughs> <doing that. laughs> Mr. Shue, any other questions? No, I, I Ms. Ogletree. Uh, so the satellite picture that we have, that's not what's on the screen, but the satellite picture that we have doesn't show art spaces across the street from the area uh, encircled by red. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So. Yeah, correct. Art space was built in this lot here. Okay, I, and right now you absolutely need the part that's outlined in yellow, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And part of the red is what you're needing for, is that turnaround space or is it storage? Or I'm, I'm just trying to understand which part of it you're thinking you would use. Um. The two little buildings that are west of the gas shop in the red, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of fenced off. You can see a little bit of an outline on the mm -hmm. west side of the building. Yeah. Where there's a fence. Yeah. I'd be interested in keeping that for the gas department. Um, but, you know, we could kind of fence it off just a little bit square. So it's not at an angle going into a triangle there. Um, I'd like to have the building as a storage building. We're kind of limited in our indoor storage and we're trying to get it filled up right now. Okay. Um, so those storage buildings would come in handy for us. And then the rest of it, like uh, Mike was saying, uh, we could use that for parking or something with the river walk, incorporate that into the river walk. Okay. I and we could even, oh, go ahead. I just was gonna say that the only concern that I'm having about all this is that I don't want to create an eyesore right there in terms of outside storage because there is, we have, I, as I understand it, there are some people who are interested in doing some housing perhaps west of there. And so that's, I mean, I understand we may have a, an environmental issue that will prevent us from doing anything besides some kind of storage, but I just don't, I don't really like the idea of creating a, a yard that is there. Um, but that's my right, right now you can see where I have my pipe stored on the north side of the building. Uh-huh. Um, and then on the west side you'll see a, I have a trailer there, it's kind of like a brick red. Right. I would actually probably store my pipe in that area right there and not utilize that for my trailer and move my trailer over into the parking area in between the buildings <coughs> in the New property we buy. Okay. Um, the only thing I really plan on putting over in that empty lot would be my dirt pile, which right now I have in the property that's in the yellow. Mm -hmm. um, we are storing our dirt pile right now in, in private property. Okay. And I haven't limited what, what I can store. It's, it's kind of hard keeping up um, when we have projects going on, keeping enough dirt because I'm limited of what I can store there. Okay. Those are the concerns that I have. Okay, uh, the, the, the thing that, I guess in an answer to Ms. Ogletree, uh, the best thing to do would be to probably, you know, fence off uh, that area right in that one larger building across the way so that uh, it's not obtrusive. Uh, you can put a fence of some type that makes it where it's hidden. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the rest of that, I would like to see uh, or a portion of that, because uh, the residents of our space Creep program project, they really don't have any place to go outside and do anything. So I really believe if we were to maybe be able to make a small mini, not necessarily a park for kids, but tables and chairs or someplace where so they can go out and, and you know rest and relax, and I think something like that. I think if we took a portion of that. I think it would be wise to do that. Be easy to incorporate to the river too. Yes, it yeah, would be. Mm -hmm. So it would be. So it'd be nice to have that. But so, Mr. Valentine, how can how can we tie this up? And can we ask for a first right of refusal, being that there is another interested party? Um, uh, that's the reason we brought it to council. I kind of 
I'm, I'm hearing a consensus that um, I think I have to put down some earnest money okay. to make the offer, but the offer would be based on environmental <coughs> um, clearance. Okay. So. <coughs> well, just I think from the discussion, I think you have your answer. I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Les, do you have any questions? I don't, Mayor. Thank okay. you. <coughs> All right, let's go on to uh, item three then. Uh, memorandum of understanding <coughs> between Los Angeles County, City of Trinidad, Nature Conservancy, and Trust for Public Lands for the Fisher Creek Recreation Plan and Impact Study. Mr. Valentine, what do you have? Thank you, Mayor. Council, um, the City, County, City, Trust for Public Lands, and the Nature Conservancy, as uh, you know, went. Uh, forward and received a grant from DOLA for for this study. Um, what I've included in the packet is some, some documentation that uh, we've been back and forth with the county and the, the two other agencies trying to have a memorandum of understanding because you know when you put all these government agencies together we, we've got to <laughs> have something in writing so that we can uh, you know manage the grant. This is preliminary. Um, the Nature Conservancy is still looking at it internally with, the, with their people. They have not got back, but um, we'd like to, once it's approved and everything, we'd like to move forward with it. So I, I wanted to get it in front of council for any thoughts they have so that I also included in there uh, an RFP or RFQ request for qualifications that's been put together uh, to go out for consultants because we, we have to go through basically the county and the city's procurement processes. The county is the lead agency on this, this grant. They, they took the lead on it and I think I see Phil on, on the call. Thank you county and thanks Phil for taking the lead on this one. Um, but uh, Phil and the county have been back and forth and, and this is uh, what the, they've come up with and we've come up with. And with that, uh, once everything is good to go, I'd like to bring it to the council for formal approval. Um, so that's why I have it here on work session. Mr. Dornenkamp, uh, I see you're on. Do you have anything to add? Is it working? Because our, com working. our computers all just went down. Uh -oh. Zoom, uh -oh. Zoom crashed, I think. I was so just headed down to see what was going it's on. It's just us. Though. I think yeah. it's frozen. Everybody's up there. Audra, can you hear us? She's frozen. Yeah. She and I think it's frozen. Let's Bring everybody in live. They're mm -hmm. seized up. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and get some discussion going, uh, Mr. Williams. <laughs> I don't have any uh, comment on this, Mayor. Mr. Goodall. Other than I appreciate the county taking the lead on this and everything looks to be good. Okay. Mr. DeBona. Well, the Nature Conservancy has helped protect millions of Colorado acres since 1966, as well as thousands of, of river miles. And I'm sure it's going to play a major role in the, in the Fishers Peak State Park's master plan. But how much of an impact will it have maintaining the ecological sustainability for wildlife habitat and its population? Well, I think this is pretty much, this grant is mostly for the, uh, to be able to, to look at the, how to get from Trinidad to Fisher's Peak. Right. Okay. A, as far as what's going on at Fisher's Peak is a completely other, uh, CPW Center. is is doing that. Don't okay. Do you still have Wi-Fi? I think so, yeah. My Mr. Schumer. Are connected. No, I'm, no. Our Wi-Fi went down. Doing a good job with the county, so if you have any questions. Ms. Ogletree. Under scope of work, uh, they, we have uh, community and public engagement, and that this yeah. consultant I mean, the is going to coordinate with a bunch of different of groups in the city. Mm. One of them I felt like that was missing was the college no. isn't it's listed it's as one of the people that they would engage with, and I you think it would be a good idea. I have no. Uh, Ms. Ogletree had a question. 
Uh, go ahead and repeat your. I'm sorry. Under the plan scope of work for the consultant, there's a, an aspect that's community and public engagement, and it has local residents and, and a bunch of different other things, but it doesn't specifically list the college. And I think the college would be a good party to have present for that engagement. Okay. And then good the, point. the other question, the only other question I had is what say will the city have in terms of reviewing these? Do you all sit down together and review them, or is it just the county that's going to be reviewing them? No, no be my uh, question. Yeah, you? all. Uh, all entities will sit down once we get you know proposals in and we'll we'll start out where we're, everybody will give them copies and read it read through them and then kind of score them individually and then narrow it down and there may be an interview process with uh depending on how many we get uh, as as many as three um but Yes, we'll have a say. I mean, we're all in this equal, so. Okay. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Now you did it. Huh. You don't trust us? Are we back, Audrey? Can you hear us? It says it's Press. muted. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good job. And Ms. Ogletree asked my question. That was, we want to make sure that we have a seat at the table oh, for yes. the discussion on this. So. Definitely. Okay. Any, other, okay, any other questions that come up? None? Okay. Let's go on to item four, discussion regarding new public health orders. Mr. Valentine? Uh, yeah. Mayor, Council just wanted to I need to give you the heads up. We're here. We are in person. Um, the county um, in your packet. Uh, the county. I want to get the words right. Sorry. They rescinded the local Los Angeles and Huerfano County public health order during their May 19th board of health meeting, uh, and the changes went into effect immediately. So. Basically, we're following the governor's new executive order. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to let council know that we're kind of slowly working our way to opening city, you know, facilities, the welcome center, uh, the library has been open for a couple weeks now. Uh, they're they're letting people come in for an hour and then then they have to leave and you know and. Um, downstairs, the utility office is still closed, but we'll be moving toward opening the, that up to let customers come in and pay their bills and get utility hookups without having to ring the bell and, and have somebody come and screen you and do all that. So uh, I just uh, wanted council to know that information. Um, it's going to, to help a lot. Um, you know, we at the city are like on the second floor. We've had the doors locked, but anybody who comes and rings the bell, we let them in and we talk to them. And you know, and so that means somebody has to get up, go to the door, bring them in. So you don't have to grovel them anymore to come in. The <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it, but we're we're trying to we're trying to a soft opening. Sure, okay. like nice. you know, we're just, nice. we're just yeah. kind of letting people. Find out that hey, I can actually go in. Uh, and those and, the doors were open when right we came in tonight. So. Yeah. So um, and and I don't know if council has any questions or anything as we move forward, but I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, we've tried three different configurations here in council chambers. Tonight is another one. I don't <laughs> you know know as we move forward. I know we had you on the dais, and, and there was some question of whether we were six foot apart and everything, so um, there's still that question. I think we're four and a half feet apart. Well, I was six. This configuration seems to work okay. Yeah, um, but as we move forward, and we have the press here, but as you know, citizens want to come in and address council, we'll figure that out also. I guess if citizens want to come in and, uh, you know, I, I don't know if we could put a speaker in, out, you know, in the foyer out there, <laughs> and maybe if they want to make a presentation, we can call them in. Yeah, that could be mm -hmm. one, could be one way to, yeah. 
to do that. But um, shift everything this way here, we'd have a room for futures across right. the back or something. Yeah, like I think we've done a pretty awesome job about Excellent you know job. keeping uh, citizens uh, their availability to meet with council or get on a meeting. So, uh, but it will be great to put all this behind us. I've got some questions, if any. Mr. Williamson, have any questions? I don't have any questions. I mean, I, I think um, we're sort of uh, subject to control that's, that's, that's passed out of control, so we just have to keep on and practice. We should get on. I think we're in a much more productive format now of having to be back in person. I think it's much more productive. Mr. Bond, I agree. I agree. Mr. Shue? Yep. No questions. Okay. Local to I agree. I love seeing your face. Yes. Okay. Yep. Anything else? That's it. Okay. On to item four, a discussion regarding the retreat. And I'm going to discuss this a little bit. And I know there was a little bit of pushback the last time, and, uh, you know, we, you know, Mr. Valentine and I laid out the several items that uh, we were discussing about having it on. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention, and I think is of utmost concern, is that any time I was talking about trying to have these items worked into a work session, um, there were, like I said, and of course, like I mentioned, there were, we would not do all of these at a retreat. So we're looking at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So there's 12 items that were on this list. And like I said, but we probably would not have to do all of them. But here, here lies the problem, is that if we try to fit one or two of these into a regular work session, and into a... May I ask a quick question? Sure. Is, is there a way to see the 12 easily? Uh, if I can write a copy. If you want a copy, yeah. Then for me, uh, let me give you the top copy. Got some stuff on top stuff like that. And the reason why I say that it's going to be difficult to do that without an actual retreat is I talked to Mr. Valentine a little bit and one of the biggest problem is, is, let's take a look at some of the most recent work sessions that we've had, or even meetings. Uh, what happens is, it seems like any time that we want to try to plan a retreat, or we want to have a work session, all these other little, other, not little things, other things crop up at the same time. I'll give you some examples. On uh, April the 5th, this is April the 5th, uh, there was a discussion regarding community, a Center for Community Innovation, uh, Northeast New Mexico Educational Foundation of uh, Support Agreement. Consideration of agreement with urban neighborhoods for the storage of the Fox Theater. Discussion regarding the Historic Preservation Commission's last and landmarking of old buildings. Update regarding the new outline. Update regarding state legislation by Debbie Wagner. Uh, then on May the 10th, we have first quarter marijuana allocations. And then we had the discussion regarding private activity bonds for the rest of the apartments. And we briefly discussed the housing incentives discussion. We had a grants and project update. On uh, April the 26th, that was when we had that housing uh, work session. And this goes back, I just pulled a few of these. We, these went, went back to January the 25th. Uh, we had discussion of the model traffic code. Uh, the discussion amending the allocation of the city's marijuana sales tax, and discussion regarding the Trinidad Police Department's bargaining unit. And like I said, those were just a few of the discussion items that I was able to that I pulled up real quick to show you people on council that I think that it's going to be really necessary that we have a, a true retreat. Because what happens is, like Mr. Valentine and I discussed, is these things, besides what's on this list that you're looking at here, these items, they all crop up in the middle somewhere. And they're trying to prepare just those items, not the items that are even listed on this retreat. We're not even touching these items on the retreat. And I feel that it's really 
better if we were to either invest a full day or two half days to try to get some of these done. We may be able to take some of these and, and put them into a regular work session. I think that, that might work to try to narrow this down because if we were to, if we were to try to tackle, let's say two of these items, it would take us uh, you know, six work sessions, which would equal to another three months work, uh, with a three months time frame. So half of this stuff wouldn't even get approached until August sometime. So that's a, that's a real concern. So I feel like, and in talking to Mr. Valentine, he and I think staff want some direction from us and from these particular items that are on this list. This, these are items that we've been discussing for, some of these items we've been dis discussing for a year. And then more items are going to be cropping up all the time for work sessions. So that's why I feel that it is uh, essential that we do have a sit down uh, amongst ourselves and give council direction as how to proceed and when to proceed with some of these items and what's, uh, you know, what comes first, what comes second, and on and on. Uh, Mr. Valentine, is that kind of the way you see it in a sense? Um, yes, Mayor, um, I appreciate that. Um, what I wanted to hear from Council is kind of, kind of their, their direction consensus on whether this is a one day, whether, and I know we sat down with this, this is a list that we had for the retreat that was going to happen back in April, April of 2020, pre-COVID. So you can see we've knocked off a few of them, but we've added some. So um, I don't know if this is all of council, if there's anything to add to that. Um, the retreat is going to take some time to put enough information to make it viable so um, we may have to skip a work session to, mm -hmm. to, to really put something together um, I don't know you know mm -hmm. if it would be split or, or otherwise so that's I put this on the agenda just to, to have this discussion in the in, in June we have that extra week with that fifth week time frame. And uh, working that out to where we don't have, uh, staff doesn't have to prepare any additional information. I think we could work around that uh, time frame. We don't have an extra meeting in June, Mayor. We have a, a regular meeting on the 1st, yes, a regular meeting on the 15th, but then, um, oh, I think it's back in June. Well, there's an extra meeting. Yeah, there's five Tuesdays in June. Yeah. So there's an extra week there that we can utilize this and another one if we have to, so. So anyway, um, and, and let's talk about Maine where Memorial Day, we're not gonna have one then. Right. Exactly. Why not? Come on. <laughs> you take our fishing poles. Our fishing poles. <laughs> anyway, uh, after I give, like I said, I've given you my reasons why I think it's really critical to try to knock some of these off to give counsel to for us to know what we're doing and, and uh, also for staff to be able to have some ideas to what our what our requests are. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, okay. and I would add that this was staff and the mayor and just everything that's going on now. If you have anything to add, please let us know. Or, yeah. You know, I know it's an inconvenience for some of you, especially if you like Mr. Williamson, he works, Mr. DeBono, he works, right? I know you work part-time or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Goodall, uh, you know, you, you take care of your park. Uh, and so it, it is an inconvenience. Uh, but unfortunately, as council members, that's something that we. But my really concerns is not about my inconvenience. When I run for this, I, I made myself available for this position because that's part of what comes with the, with being on city council. I'm more concerned with the workload of staff 
and pulling department heads out of the field and everything else. I think there's gotta be a better way if we just took and split our two work sessions, one for a retreat type setting, and then one on stuff that comes up, and we, I think we could knock it out in a couple of sessions and it may run longer than our normal meeting. I still think that's an opportunity for us to deal with this. If there was an, if we needed someone, a department head or something, we could try to work it into a schedule we set up for the meeting where they could appear for discussion on that specific topic. I think there's gotta be a better way than just pulling uh, everybody out for either two half days or one full day if we can do it in a work session setting, dedicate one work session out of our two in the month strictly to handle these items. Mr. Um, Valentine, do you think it'd be difficult to pull staff, uh, you know, some of these department heads off for this meeting? Um, yes, it, it, it will, if, <clears throat> If they sit through the whole thing, which at times I don't, you know, it would be good for them to get council direction, but um, maybe we could bring them in, you know, we'll do just the time as, slot. as uh, they come in. I have in. a question, if you don't mind, Mike. Um, the mayor had mentioned you were looking for direction, and, and sorry to put you on the spot like this. What, I mean, specifically, what direction are you looking for? Like, as, as a hard example, like this, uh, Capital Improvement Project, five year specific plan. What, what would you expect us to give you on this? Right, well, your your thoughts on, on where, you know, the five year plan for CIP projects come, um, just um, the... Uh, what, would it, wouldn't it, I mean, is it possible that the department heads can uh, work with you. I mean, is that that was part of your plan, and I think it was a super effective plan. And I want to say publicly, I, I take umbrage at the fact of you mentioning that that I um, I'm I'm not ready to share my time. I mean, it, it, like Rusty, when I did this, I take this job seriously. And it's not it's not that I'm worried about an investment of time. Um, I'm not. I, I think that we really need to look at the deployment of city staff's uh, time and to split it over two days, you're just multiplying the mobilization effort there. So <coughs> it's nothing about about my time invested here. It's, it's about if it's good uh, use of, of that time. But my question is, uh, for the capital improvement plans, talking specifically for that as an example, um, your idea was to put um, department heads in place. I think that was a, a really great plan. It has, uh, you know, really borne out a lot of, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of good things that have been born out of that idea. But a further, further utilization of that would be to have you and your department heads work together and produce uh, their own five-year capital improvement plan because, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to sit here and talk about anything uh, to that in my mind. I mean, water mains, electric poles, they know the plants, they know their jobs, and it may be good to present to us and, and we can have a good look at the, the five-year plan. And I think a lot of these are pretty pretty similar, or the same ilk. I mean, outdoor recreation, we're moving more towards having that department. Uh, you, you guys can come up with recommendations to show us and we can steer that I mean that's using the subject matter experts for the subject matter that, and then um, <coughs> that, that makes further uh, you know more concise use of everybody's time that's that's my uh, thoughts okay. um, I would I would turn it around to council um, as as city manager and staff we're trying to put together a retreat, but my question here today is, what does council want out of the retreat? You know, what, where are we going with this? Um, you know, come out with a mission statement and, and our objectives that are on the wall and 
make sure everything fits within those guidelines or I well, from what I see it, it, it's a it's a process of being strategic Well, if you want to keep ahead of the game, like you said, a lot of issues and small minor details surmount into major issues, then I guess uh, my discretion would be if that's what it's going to materialize to maybe two half-day sessions or a full-day session. And with staff, if staff's okay with that, if they're not too inundated with the daily uh, routines that they do, then uh, I guess that's all right. Mr. Shu. Well, I, I, you know, you discuss all the stuff in the day, and it, that's still too much stuff to discover. Oh, it is. I like to say, we could tear this ridiculous. So we could tear this down. That's mm -hmm. yeah, we have stuff. To put you it know, down. downtown parking. There's not much we can do about that. There isn't a lot. Well, there's of a big discussion about where we're going to park. What's well, the discussion? And that's the whole idea. Is to but where's the discussion? Well, Give me an example. Well, the discussion is, for instance. What do well, we do with this property over here? Well, we, I've asked, I've talked to Mike about that a couple there's, of times. There's the, the property where the old uh, grid, the old grid. Uh, that's what I'm saying. What, what, are we going to do it or what? That's, I mean, that's a question. It's the discussion. same thing with relocation of the welcome center. Yeah. You don't have much choice where we're going to put it. I mean, those are things that, for us, I think is kind of silly to, you're going to present it and give us the information where we can do it, and we either vote for it or we don't. I mean that's that's the point. Well, the relocation you know, you can discuss all this stuff all you want. Well, you give me a good I, example of the relocation of the Welcome Center. Uh, and what's going to probably come out of this traffic study might that might probably help. So that would be that could be one item that could be eliminated off of this list. But like I said this is just a list that's bit. This is that's one of the items on this list you know, over a year. You're going to have no matter what we do with any of this, we're still going to have stuff come up during the weeks, the months, mm -hmm. and it's that. Little stuff, big stuff. I mean, you got to face it back. Things are going to change, and, and we're going to end up doing that with the work sessions. And, and like I say, I would be in favor of adding a couple of these items every week to the work session and, and go from there. I, I think it's really tough on the staff, and I think we're putting a lot more pressure on them. And, you know, from my experience, we had three, two or three of these retreats when I was on the council before. And I'm not saying that's an example, but I'm just saying that. This is probably, and I will say this, a better council than what I was on because we had a lot of conflict. And we never accomplished anything. We just spent a whole day arguing and, and it turned out to be silly. Mm -hmm. And it was just a waste of time. And I'm not saying that will happen here, but those are things to consider that, you know, and, and I still think the priority and, and pick the stuff that we need to have done this week or next week, not down a month down that way to get that stuff done. I think that would be the way to work it the best way we can. Mitch, sure. I think it was in 2018, we did have a retreat. And we well, had yeah, a, I wasn't and, on And we, we weren't on, but we had yeah. it at the La Quinta. And uh, it was very productive. I came in, were you on? I was on, and I thought it was at the Holiday Inn. We had it there in the back at the hall, one or the other anyway. Yeah, but anyway, it was, it was there, and it was a very productive uh, I'm not session. And what it was is that we had all of our directors there and uh, it was just good discussion uh, from council and, and direction. So, Ms. Ogletree. I see a retreat as a high level conversation that doesn't necessarily involve staff beyond you, Mike, because you are our sole employee, except for our <laughs> city attorney. You are who we look to to accomplish what the city wants to have happen. And I think it would be a mistake for us to bring in department heads and for us to ask them those questions. They answer to you, and they don't answer to us. So what I would envision that we would be doing is talking about where we're heading as a city, what we understand are large problems that we have that need to be addressed, and that's what I'm presuming you want from us in terms of what priorities not do we put a parking lot here or there or wherever, but for us to say, okay, within five years, here's what we envision is gonna be happening here, here's how many people we'd like to see living here, here's how many businesses we'd like to see settled here, here's what we want in our infrastructure, so that you have guidance in, in how you're prioritizing how you do your job. That's, the, I, that's what I think a retreat is for. 
you know, I think that's really, you bring up a really good point in uh, maybe not necessarily having directors there. Uh, they, you know, anybody that's involved with some of these items here, uh, if those that we select, if there is a director that has to give us information, maybe Mr. Valentine, maybe they could prepare that information prior to and not have to be there. And then when we have that discussion, then we take it back to them and say, this is what council has discussed as to what they would like to see. That, to me, sounds like a good idea. What do you guys think that, I know you, what do you think about that particular, of doing it that way? The thing that I would say is any, I mean, to go into it, I think we should have some plan of um, making sure that's an actionable item afterwards, but I mean, it still doesn't really alter the fact that it's all, you can accomplish it from, um, work sessions. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not a different setting than a work session. There's, there's, I mean, there's no defining characteristics different than a work session. That's my opinion. There is, because I've been in, I've, I've, I've been in a retreat and there is a difference. Mr. Goodall. I still feel, you know, I rely on Mike to say, y'all, we've talked about trying to skip some work sessions. Y'all are hammered. You got so much on your plate. I rely on you heavily. If you want a retreat and you think it would be beneficial and not detrimental to your time that could be spent more effective somewhere else, then I'll rely heavily on what your opinion of a retreat or to handle it at work session. And I'll let it go at that. Okay. Uh, we have one council member that's not here and uh, you know I know she has expressed, and of course I'm not speaking for her, but she has expressed that feeling that she would like to have a retreat. But you might reach out to her and see what she thinks. Okay. Can you do that and then make a decision on that. You bet. I, uh, I appreciate the feedback. Um, I think we could mold something in where staff is not you know, taken in. I like that um, mm -hmm. Councilwoman Ogletree's concept of, you know, that, that's what I, I feel like <coughs> council wants to give to me and that's what I think I need from council. Is, you know. Like so there may be a couple of staff, you know, like Audra possibly can maybe at that retreat, uh, you know, that, that would be something, you know, a couple of people there. Not to interrupt you, but if you don't mind, we hired you and we, we kind of rely on you to bring up what we think is needs to be done. Sure. And I, I, I don't know if that's a big part of the retreat or not, but we, we expect you and, and, and your people that you, that are underneath you to bring all this stuff up to us. And, uh, and that it is tough to, to do all this. So I, I think I agree with Rusty. I think that uh, your judgment should be a, a big bearing on what, the, what goes on. One thing, one thing I'd really like to hear from you is whether or not you think the current structure of the administration is sufficient, or whether you think you you see that within a certain amount of years you're going to need an assistant city manager, or what you see as you're seeing all the, how busy you are, what are the holes that we don't see because we're not on the ground. So those, that's a conversation I think we need to have. That's true, and like I said, you know where we are today is not where we were three years ago or five years ago or even 10 years ago, you know, and where we're going is completely different. So I think at a high level conversation, that discussion needs to be had. And that's, you know, I'm agreeing with you. So anyway, uh, check with uh, okay. Ms. Bagel and then you make that decision. That's tough. Okay, uh, Mr. Valentine, I think that was a, another item or two that an item that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, there, there's several things have come up. Um, I, I guess the very first one, hopefully you were able to check your emails. There was a flurry of back and forth, and I believe uh, Debbie Wagner is hopefully on the call, and she may have some input, but um, the Southwest chief uh not the southwest chief the front range rail bill uh senate bill 238 there was a letter that was prepared uh on behalf of the trinidad city council urging support um we kind of went through this 
Um, after the last meeting discussion and several iterations of the bill, um, I just want to make sure council is aware of it before we move forward. I don't know if council was able to review that. Um, there are, Debbie provided uh, several options. Uh, we could amend the, the, the letter to the state uh, that the city is concerned about the amount of sales tax and, and uh, they added an amendment to address that issue. Uh, they they want to actually see if uh, they would go for federal funding to reduce the tax burden. Um, there was a uh, several iterations of, of changes that they would uh, go for federal funding first before the tax burden. Um, so I, I just, before I send the letter off, I didn't want to send it off, um, you know, and, and not get full support from council or how, how this was going to go. And I would open it for discussion Mayor, um, well, let me go ahead and give a little bit of information on this. Like I said, this front range, front range district, I really believe is in, it's important because we know the population growth uh, in the near future and even down the road to 2050 is going to, they're, they're thinking that there's going to be an additional 7 million people in the state of Colorado by the year 2050. 2045 somewhere in there so we need to begin to look down the road at what transportation is going to look like and how to transfer people to transport people all the way up and down uh, not only the front range but you know Wyoming is interested in partaking in this but also to take it further south into uh, New Mexico which right now it does but the way it, the way it comes is comes from Chicago to Atlanta through here and then down south. We're looking for at the, some point in the future where it would be a direct line and it's all said and done because what's going to happen first is it's going to go to Pueblo up to Fort Collins and then back and back around. The long term is to get a straight line between Pueblo and Trinidad to eliminate that those, those people that want to go, go south. We know this is a long term goal. It's not going to be immediate. We need that seat at the table, which is something that I did uh, not this weekend, but weekend before last. I uh, worked with, uh, with Debbie and also worked with Sal Pace on this. There was a question concerning the, um, the eminent domain. Eminent domain, but they changed the language on it because one of the questions that came up from the county commissioners was uh, it said that that the executive session is where the decision would be made uh, to go for eminent domain, but now it's changed that it would be in public, that, that if there's any em eminent domain, it would be made in public. I don't really see, eminent domain is so rarely used. I mean, we saw it here in Trinidad back in the 80s with uh, Pino Ken, but that was a federal issue. At the state issue, the only way I could see that would happen along with the front range rail would be to give you a good example. I'm not sure if I gave you this example the other day. Let's say uh, Almoro wanted a train station. So it's off of the main rail line. So what would happen, discussion would be, would, you'd have to have discussion with Almoro and all the adjacent property owners that would be affected by the rail system to see if they are for it or not try to work with them to be pay they would they would have to get paid fair market value anyhow but work with them up front anyway and that's what has to happen anyhow so that the ultimate thing would be is if they have to take eminent domain it could happen but they still would have to get paid fair market value for their property mm -hmm. but I don't see where around this area where that would happen I just don't I just don't see because that straight line coming from Pueblo to here in Trinidad there's nothing in between there's the only place that would have a, a station, if any, would be Walsenburg. Mayor, is it is it known the front range rail is anticipated to be 
new rail or are they using existing rail? That will be something that would have to be figured out as we go along because uh, Burlington Northern owns, owns that rail system. There may have to be some additional uh, sidings uh, for, uh, for trains to pass by each other. Uh, the system would probably be upgraded because I believe right now it is a, a welded or bolted rail system and they are slowly replacing across everywhere they're replacing with welded rail which they feel is more efficient and it doesn't create but it problem. is anticipated to follow the same basic rail plan i believe that's probably i don't it won't change if, if it would be side by side of it and if you if you go along i-25 you could see where the rail already has you know pretty good room on either side of it anyhow so i i just i just uh -huh. personally uh, I just feel like this is, I, I, I think the letter is good. Uh, and as far as funding goes, it is going to be absolutely essential that we try to use and get federal funding. Currently, we have, uh, the president that we have, as everybody knows, is Amtrak Joe. He is very uh, animate about putting money toward uh, a rail system, not only here, uh, but across the entire country. Amtrak has already stated that this area here from New Mexico to Wyoming is one of their most current priorities that they're looking at. They're really looking at this area to, to do something with. So they are very adamant. So a combination of federal funding, which the district, the, the, the board of directors on that district we have to make sure that we go after all the money available for federal funding, along with Amtrak money, along with Burlington Northern Santa Fe Trail, also UPUP, which is up further north. So these would all be uh, funds that would have to be investigated before we would even go, or they would even go toward a fast for a sales tax. So it would all have to be you know, taken to the extreme before that. They're concerned about a sales tax over an extended period of time, but is there a time frame? Well, if you, talk? if you look at the at the bill, it says that the, uh, I forget exactly who, at the state level, if there was a tax, every two years, the, I'm not sure if it's the Finance Committee or whoever, the Transportation Committee would be looking at that bill to make sure that it's doing its work. If it did, what, if it was not doing its work, I think they, have, they would have the authority to say, no, you have to pull this to sales tax off. That's the way I read the bill. So there is, there are some uh, guide or some side markers there that has some control. It's nine tenths of a cent for 40 eight years. Tenths. Eight tenths. Eight tenths. Eight tenths. Up, it says up to eight tenths. Up to, up to eight tenths. Up to eight tenths. And the problem is I still stand by what I said before is, if they don't get any funding anywhere else, that tax goes into place and it's 40 years of tax. And with our infrastructure, the age it is, and we have major catastrophe in this town trying to pass another tax, the CIP is a perfect example, which barely, I barely got that passed. Me and Pat and Penny Saidi pushed that hard and it barely passed. If this goes through, gets added to the sales tax i'm afraid we will never pass another cip or a bond issue if we had a major catastrophe and someone said well if something big happens people would just have to go for it well you've been here forever you've been here forever you've been here forever and you that's not the way it works in trinidad i've been here 30 years and i've seen that is not the way it works the people in trinidad will tell you find another way and it scares the hell out of me the long term for the looking out for the community of Trinidad with any bond issues, if this goes through, they don't get funding elsewhere, the funding is minimal, and we get a big tax increase passing anything else in the future, we have a big problem. It scares me, and I feel I have to say this right now again to everybody. I we speak as a voice of one, and the majority says, letter's good, send it off put my name on there or whatever because we speak as a voice of one but I have to express my concerns and that is my fear with this and and I don't think it's going to follow the same rail because this has to be a high speed rail for it to be effective people are not going to ride a train at 60 miles an hour going north from back and forth and for it to be a high speed rail that rail cannot run on the way it's running 
where that existing rail runs, it's gonna to have to go on the east side of the highway in some places to get a high speed rail in to make this effective. So I haven't seen the updates like you, Mayor. I haven't read all the new stuff. Um, I've been meaning to reach out to Deb and ask her to keep me on any amendments to it. I'd appreciate anything to be shared. Um, I am more than happy to read through and have my mind changed. But right now, with the way the bill reads, my mind has not been changed. And I feel a need to express and did you that. Read, did no. you read the amendments that were in there? I have not seen any amendments that came in. Well, I think but Mike sent them off to you, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I think you are incorrect as far as not utilizing the, the, the the present bed for rail for high speed. Now, high speed in other parts of the world are three, four hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll never achieve that here in no. this country. We will achieve maybe up to probably maybe 110 miles an hour, mm -hmm. which the current rail system that they are actually putting in place now will reach those capacities. Right now, they'll reach up to like 79 miles an hour. Okay. So, uh, going forward, uh, who knows what the future will hold as far as uh, will it need to be a higher speed? We don't know. I think that they will be able to, the district will utilize uh, the, the rail system that there is, that's in place to make sure that it works properly. There may be a few places that maybe need to be reconfigured, but it's not going to be reconfigured all the, the, the entire length of the property. Go ahead. My question, I'm just not quite understanding they're proposing a district that's five miles to the east and west of I-25, is that where? Yes. And that's the only people, the people who live within that are the ones who are taxed with regard to this? Yes, from New Mexico border to the Wyoming border. But it incorporates, if you look at the entire bill, it incorporates all of El Paso County or El Paso or Colorado Springs. It also incorporates all of Douglas County, all of the uh, Denver areas. Uh, Part of Wild County, which is and it extends a little bit further than five, than five miles, so it, ex, it it also extends into those areas, even though it's not five miles. But in this area, it will go five miles from uh, five miles from where it's at right now, from I-25. I'm just understanding why is it not just a statewide kind of tax? Because it's going to benefit the whole state and the whole region. Why can't it just limited to? Because the reason being is that the people on the uh, west western part of the state would have difficulty tying in. Now there is there's a, there's talk about maybe trying to do something in the future from uh, Alamosa, you know, tying in somewhere, but that is way down the road. Well, I hardly ever use the right roads on that side of the state. <laughs> <laughs> we just all you know, those things. Uh, I understand that there is some concern, uh, but I think if we are to look at the future of Trinidad, I understand the sales tax thing, but I also understand that we need to be thinking forward, just like everything else. If let, let's take, for instance, Fisher's Peak. If all of a sudden I brought came to you guys four years ago and said, cost too doggone much money, and we're going to have to put out so much money, and said, we did, and just couldn't see it, it wouldn't happen. I, I like the concept. I, I'm, I'm in favor of it, but I don't know that I like that narrow kind of perspective on the taxation. Yeah. Now, there talks about a two mile distance from I 25. And the two mile is for those, uh, any, any community along the way that would want a rail or a, a rail station. That's the purpose of that two mile uh, that we're talking about. It cannot extend further than that. Are we still looking 10 years down the road before that link from Pueblo to Trinidad? Isn't that kind of the time frame they're looking at? I think so, but here's the thing, Rusty, that I'm thinking about is that we're waiting to see with this American Recovery Act if the state of Colorado is going to get like $2.4 billion, I believe, or $2.2 billion uh, for transportation, and I think it's, from what I understand, it's supposed to be dedicated mostly for the rail system. Now, one of the things that I've been talking, and I have support from some of our other commissioners already, uh, for the majority, actually, is that that money, a lot of it will be used for that through car service, 
going to, to Pueblo and Arc North. I want to talk to them and say, why can't we take a portion of that money and install PTC, which is positive train control, which would be needed, and install positive train control between Pueblo and Trinidad, it would give us a very serious foothold to say maybe it would be a shorter term. And that's the whole idea to take some of this money to for that particular purpose. And I think that would happen because the current bill, the, the, we just received $2.5 million over the last week from the Transportation Committee for uh, the current commissioner that we have right now. And of course we're going to go after federal grants and stuff like this. So uh, all this money uh, will give us some leverage to be able to say we have a city to seat at the table and we feel like we need to go down the shore to the two so that Trinidad will be impacted at some point. Um, so I'm not hearing whether there's a consensus or not, but uh, <laughs> and I know you guys said uh, you pay me the big bucks, so figure that out. But <laughs> That's, right. That's a little cloudy. Water. So yeah, um, several options that uh, Debbie added in her email was uh, here, where it says Congress has created major funding opportunities. We can add in a line in there that says City Council believes. It is of paramount interest for the state to obtain as much federal funding as possible to reduce the tax burden to the taxpayers. And we could add that into the letter, um, just saying. And then she also said um, in the bill, it requires a majority of registered voters of the district to grant taxing authority. I think that's already supposed to be in there. That, that is in there. She said that's in there. So just. Just as a reference, um, I guess that would be everybody in that in district, those in that district in so that, that district, district voting. Right? Let's say they put, let's say the district proposes a tax and it, it fails. Right. It doesn't appear. And then the last thing I want to put out there that she mentioned is, uh, if council uh, members still have concerns about the bill, it is appropriate for the mayor or anyone else to send a letter personally to testify on behalf of um, I yeah. that's a tough one because it will look like if it comes from the office of mayor and it'll look like you know city agreed so um, I I'm out <laughs> just being, being part of the commission I've been asked you know to testify tomorrow and on two thirty okay and I think Debbie, if you're online, uh, maybe you can lay out the timeline. If City Council uh, has a consensus to move forward, we need to get this letter amended if needed and send up to you via email for tomorrow's hearing. Correct? She may not be on, but I think no. She is. said she's on by phone. Mm -hmm. I think she was correct about that. We'll go around the room, pull the room. Ask I, I, want, I want to make it clear. I, I definitely agree with Rusty. I mean, with with uh, unless, unless they can give ironclad um, <coughs> guarantees that that uh, we're not going to incur that tax, and and they can. And eminent domain, I'm adamantly against. It. It's uh, another form of government overreach, in my opinion. And then the end result, you're going to have a rail system that's run by the government and. Amtrak, they can't run that properly. It's going to be run by the district. That's a government entity. I mean, you, you, in my opinion, do you, you don't want government running enterprise? I mean, the other thing too, you talk about eminent domain, and any time that there is any mention of a taxing district, that language has to be in there. It's in our language. It's in the county's language, I believe. It's in, it's in the state's language. It's in the federal language. Any government agency has right. eminent domain as part of their language. And the property owners and sofas didn't have a choice when the dam was mm -hmm. built. Mm -hmm. So when they put the interstate through this country, a lot of people didn't have a choice. Right. 
Anyway, Mr. Bone, what are your thoughts? Are you going to give up the Okay. Mr. Shu. Yeah, I kind of agree with what's going to handle about that. I'm not for the tax, but I'm, I'm kind of like to see the railroad. But I think that's it's an issue that's going to be a, a really big issue from now on because railroads are hard to deal with no matter what. And uh, it's going to be kind of tough to get any funding to get the Burlington Northern or any of them guys to use their rails. But I, I'd be for it outside. You'd be okay with the letter itself? Okay. So, Tree? I think it's a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity that we have here. And I think that it's short sighted to not recognize that we need this kind of connection um, being this far out from, from major cities. And I, I like the philosophy behind it that it's going to provide uh, greater opportunities for people, places to live, and create expanded cities outside of Denver and all those streets. So, yeah, it takes sacrifice. Do something like that. I don't have. I'm not sure about the reluctance about an eminent, eminent domain. I mean, that's something that government does all the time when it has to put land to a public use. If the person gets fair market value, it's not. You know, it's, it's, but it's like being in a living in a society. But I don't have a problem with that. I support. It. So that gives you your answer. So, did, I think uh, uh, some with of the amendments, that, or I think with those amendments, I think they're fine. Amendments for I sure. Um, okay, I'm going to bring up one other item, and this has to do with passenger rail with the current commission. Uh, last year, we were asked to uh, sponsor the those the bill grant last year, and it failed. We did not get that last year, uh, but they have changed it now to the. Uh, RAISE grant, which stands for Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity. That's the, what RAISE stands for today. Uh, a little bit of background, just to let you know that through this entire process, over the past, I forget when it started, 20, I can't remember exactly. This is money that's been received from the federal government. Uh, this is throughout the entire United States. $8.935 billion has been distributed to the Tanker grants, uh, raise grant, or the uh, bill grants uh, that we had so far. Uh, currently, this raise grant, uh, they will give up to twenty-five million dollars uh, for the for this grant. And that's what we've been able to uh, apply for in the past, and that's what we have received uh, with the current commission. And uh, they are competitive grants, so it, nothing to say that we will not succeed again. But uh, we were we failed last year. I think there's a little bit better chance this year to get uh, this raise grant, and so I believe that it's essential. And what this raise grant will do is there is 35 miles left of upgrades uh, between Lahana and Trinidad, and this uh, raise grant would fill in that gap if we're successful to be able to upgrade the rail system to where. Uh, the rest of the rail system is, and uh, Chrissy grants have uh, already been appropriated, the funds have been appropriated for the positive train control between here and there, so I believe that's already been done. So all that has to be done is just the rail, I believe just the rail system. Yeah, so, can I ask a question? Yes. On the uh, construction, I mean on Amtrak and that, when they were getting all these grants and that, has the rail, I know it's it's been repaired through here, has it been repaired from Santa Fe down to where they were having issues? It's gone as far as Laney, New Mexico. Which is Santa Fe. Yeah. That's the Santa right, Fe station Laney is. So what's, what's happening with that project from there on? Uh, that would be up to New Mexico and people down that, that area. But isn't that all part of the same grants? No. No, they, they, they have to go for their own grants? Yeah, they, would, they, they would have to establish their own, probably, right. commission, like we have our commission. Uh, the commission that we have now was introduced back in 2017 by, uh, uh, at that time, Senator Crowder and a couple of other people. Yeah. And uh, that's where that started from. And uh, it's, you know, had so good So does that have a big bearing on Amtrak itself? 
if they don't get that repair down that way? I don't know if they've done any repairs. They may. <coughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of curious. I can get. I know that. they were having issues with that. I, I can get. As a matter of fact, we have a rail commission uh, <coughs> meeting this Friday, and I can get that answer for you. Okay. And before we get off that subject, uh, so the request was from uh, Rick Klein and the, and the commission that the city sponsor that. We we've, we've done that previously, so I don't see an issue. No, the only, thing we, the only thing we've had to do is if it's successful, we put toward 12, 12500 $12, dollars to it, and of course, uh, none of this too Pueblo, I think does as well. So. Just like we did last. Just like we've yeah. we done in the past. Okay, good. So, any comments about going you know, sponsoring the bone? I think it's a good thing. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. I guess Royce is okay and I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. good. Two Thank you. Um, okay. Two other things. What? Yes, <laughs> well, I know. I know. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> might as well just have a retreat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I so, uh, <laughs> Um, I was contacted a while back by uh, uh, CDOT, um, CDOT personnel. Shoshana Liu, the director of CDOT, was wanting to do a listening tour around the state just to you know, walk about and see what communities are doing and, and what's happening. Well, um, she is in the midst of trying to push through a transportation bill. Uh, she won't be coming around. I got that call and on Wednesday at four, the, we'll be meeting with uh, Rich Zamora and Nathan Lind Lindquist um, staff at the staff level. They said, you know, we, we just want to hear from staff. So. Um, I think after the bill passes, Shoshana will want to come back down and I will let council know, but right now it's just a staff Will Tebow level. be at that meeting? I don't think so, no. I think it's it's more uh, at the staff level and they want to report back for now. Yeah, so. Um, and then the second thing, um, just if you haven't heard, uh, you know, we, we got a heck of a rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were notified uh, today by the state uh, engineer's office, the Division of Water, that the floodwaters that came into Trinidad Lake, by agreement, they're required to release within 72 hours. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, yeah. 5,000 acre feet. The last time they did this, they, they opened the gates up and we, we were at 1,500 CFS and we were topping bridges out east. Um, they're going to try for half that amount this time, and and if you look at the river, it's it's high, it's, it's high and it's running. Um, so um, they're hoping to release that, and I'm sure with all the the debris and everything that's there, that that may cause them some issues at the the release points. But um, for three days, uh, you, you're going to have that river. More roaring like it is. Unless there is a but to that. Unless what's what's the reservoir out east? Oh, unless uh, John Martin. John Martin. If John Martin, Martin spills, then, then we can hold a, back. That's yeah. it. Then it becomes a free so flow, is, and we don't have where to. Where, where is John yeah. Martin at this point in time? I do not know that, Mayor. Yeah, I just uh, hope they got east. dumped out east. I'm telling you, they got yeah, they're, out they're out the right. primary reservoir. <laughs> It'd be nice to store a little bit of that water. Yes, it would. <clears throat> let the let the silt settle. Yeah, it's it's pretty brown. Anything else? Sir? That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Anything else from Council? Oh, one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize. Uh, before you leave, please stop by Audra's office. We she's prepared a letter for Kim and Joyce Cucho on the oh. farmers market, and we'd like everybody to sign that. So, anyway, that's all I have. Thank Any you. other items for work sessions? No, I have no items to add. Well, you all listed. No, I'm good. Yeah, add to it. I'm good. I have nothing. 
I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay, I'll give the last. <laughs> this, is, this is a little too much. Mr. Dow, do anything? Mayor, I don't have anything unless you want me to report on House Bill 1301. I, I don't think it's necessary now. I know you've been asking about that. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that's just waiting on that cultivation. Okay. Exactly. Because yes. it's still going to actually, uh, that was first reading today, I believe. You know, I thought that also, <coughs> and I spoke to Debbie right before this meeting, and she said um, it was going before the Appropriations Committee, and I think that it's past the Appropriations. Committee, so I think it's a little further down the road now, um, but but it is kind of meandering through. Audra and I spoke to Jason Sherling today. He's one of the brothers that was before you recently on the uh, on the new cultivation exactly um, licenses, and he was in favor of it. Didn't have really strong feelings. Just so everybody knows, the the gist of this would allow people. If there was going to be some kind of really big weather event, people would be able to pull up their plants, their outdoor plants that are being cultivated, and move them to another facility off-premises, and, and be able to have it, you know, sort of there. Uh, basically, again, if it was such a, a cataclysmic weather event, that they decided to pull up their plants. Mike last night did a couple of nights ago. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's hard to know. I mean, you don't know if you're going to get hail right. until it starts hailing. Right. And, you know, the, the thing I think that, that brought this about right. was the, the snow and the freeze of September 7th of last year. They lost lots of money. Right. But even then, you don't necessarily know how cold it's going to be. I mean, you may, but you may not. And, and then if you do, of course, you have to make the determination whether or not you're going to pull your plants up and do that early. The Sherling brothers were telling us that they were able to salvage a lot of their plants because they have their, their MIPS license, and they were able to turn a lot of that product into um, waxes or resins. There, there's one primary thing like that you can do to salvage a lot Exactly. But they still were out, they, um, they approximate half a million dollars in, in cultivation. So one of the areas of concern is whether the, the municipalities would learn a lot of, excuse me, lose a lot of revenue if there was a really catastrophic weather event. Um, and I, I don't think that's the case. The other one is whether or not insurance could kick in. And that doesn't apply because it's still not allowed federally. Mm -hmm. I'm talking a lot for the event, yeah. right, or the thing that was not going to work. There is one thing I would want to bring up about that 1301. Uh, you know, there was a question that there was going to be a fee schedule or fee structures uh, from the state uh, last Friday night. And I talked to Sal Face because he was one of the ones that's helping run this bill. And I asked him, I said that you know, there was a fee structure. And he said that being that we are home rule, that we have our own ordinance in place so that we could change our ordinance at any time. If we want to decrease the fund, if we want to increase the fund, we want to do away with fund, whatever we want to do, that is up to city council. We have, and if that would be for statutory towns. As a matter of fact, I asked Les to check into that to make sure that was true. Uh, he's been trying to get a hold of the CML attorney that is, and that's that Bo Clarine, I forget what her last name is. Perrine, I think. Yeah, and yeah. she is going to uh, to get that answer to make sure it's accurate. So if you guys saw that bill and you saw that, that's uh, that was the, the answer I got from South Base. I think the only bill that had opposition was THC level limits because that had trouble in other states too. But and what it's going to do is push more people instead of planting it in the ground, go to a soft pot stop style i mean it's going to change it'll definitely change i don't things. think there's anything on that on the thc levels in this particular no, it got shot down it never made it through nothing when they it got tried to introduce out of boulder or somewhere and it got shot down immediately and there was another question a while back and i can remember you asked about uh, if there was going to be a concern there was a concern if the uh, state of colorado was going to there was some talk about maybe increasing the tax to fund schools, that is non-existent. It's just, it, it, 
never made it to first base, I guess. It's just funny to think that, like, whatever the allowable level of that had gone through that legislation, like, 60% THC is not enough. Like, right. as high as a person well, gets with 60%. What they're trying to do is cap it, like, why it didn't pass Oklahoma and New Mexico sooner. Both of them pr tried to put it between a 13 and 18% was the highest mm -hmm. level of THC, um, which is on the low end, so. <laughs> and that's what they were trying to push through here, to lower the yes. acceptable levels of concentrates because, okay. well, you, you heard about it for a while. You don't hear about it too much now, but pot tourists coming in, buying a pack of gummies and thinking you eat the whole box, then they're in the emergency <laughs> room seeing yeah. pink cows or something, but freaking out. They did say, I think, that Governor Polis had signed, uh, I'm not sure, an executive order or whatever, because the, the legislation that we have in place now, they can buy up to the mm -hmm. And I think to be able to compete with this thing with uh, New Mexico, I think he signed something in place that they could match that to two months. To two months, like the medical <laughs> side. So he's getting a whole more across the board. <laughs> just kidding, I did not just say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, uh, that's our work session. Uh, I want to say thanks for the good discussion, and uh, we'll see you next time. I agree. Yes. Great discussion. <laughs> yes, sir. Stop at Audra's. Yes. Oh, yeah. Stop at I got to stop at Audra's. Revise this letter.